Good morning. So today we're going to be doing a backyard against guitar. And these are fun little guitars. I actually did a couple of these and one, made one into a dual neck guitar. I'm not going to be doing that with this specific one. We're just going to be circumventing this one, but it's still a fun little guitar. It's rather loud. So they are rather fun little guitars. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna open this up and let's get going with it. On this instrument, if I remember correctly, the uh, tempo tone control is going to be on this board right here, and that's going to be the most logical place for it. Now, I had one more recently that this button was actually rendered useless by circuit bending it, and I'm trying to remember exactly why, and I think it's something to do with actually circuit bending it itself. I don't think it's something that jammed a button. I think it's actually like whatever we tagged onto rendered the button useless, but I'm going to go ahead and go in here and we're going to try to keep that button on this one if possible, but we will see if it is a possible thing that we could do. So we've isolated our resistor and it's actually going to be this one right here. But if you can see this resistor does not have much room whatsoever when it comes to this integrated circuit right here. Now we can't remove this goop that they put over it because this is actually something that will come up with the insulated or I'm sorry, the integrated circuit if we pull it up. So what companies often do is they put this over their integrated circuit so other companies can't steal their technologies. And in this point, it being a toy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the screwdriver and I'm going to very lightly just try to scratch away some of this coating on this. And I want to do this very lightly because the coating isn't really something that I need gone. It's just I want to add a little extra security when we solder down on this side of the integrated circuit because... Since this is a tempo tone control, what I'm going to have to do is the resistor that's giving me that effect, I'm going to have to solder onto both sides of this. Now, this is going to be really easy on this side because if you see, this is on the same track, so we can just as easily solder onto this. So our solder points are going to be right here, and it's going to be right here. So we're just going to go with those two. But these are micro integrated circuits, and or I'm sorry, micro resistors. So very often what happens if you solder onto this side and you solder onto this side, this resistor is going to come off the board. Because if you look, the resistor, Sing along with the it doesn't go through the board. It literally just sits on the top here. And that's all the security this resistor has. So what we're going to need to do is treat this resistor very delicately. So I'm going to go ahead and solder onto this side. And then we're going to run the wires out. And then I'm going to solder onto this side. We're going to run the wires out, and I'm going to immediately hot glue after that so we can add a little bit of additional security to this.
next thing we're going to be doing is we're going to be tagging some LEDs in this. Now we do want the LEDs to be sound activated. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to follow out to the speaker, which our speaker is right here. And we're going to go ahead and follow that back. And you see these are the brown wires right here. So I'm just going to tag an LED onto this and see if we get anything out of it. Sing along with the Moors of Arabia song. So that's not giving us any result whatsoever. So the next thing we're going to go ahead and try is we're just going to go try to tag it directly onto the on off switch. And the on off switch is going to need a resistor on it. But what we can do is we can ground it to the speaker and then that could actually give us enough voltage to power the LED with the resistor protecting it. But at the same time, it'll still be a sound activated LED because we're still going to have it on the speaker. So let's go ahead and try this. So surprisingly, it doesn't seem we're having any effect on that. The LED is not coming on, so we may just need a we may just need like a lower maintenance LED, something that doesn't take up so much energy. So let's go ahead and swap it out and see if we can get an effect from another one.
pro sound of this. Now the pro sound is really, really easy. It's just like when we were originally running the LED. All we do is we find where the sound output is and where the speaker is being fed to. And then we're going to follow those wires. And in this case, they are the brown wires, which go right here. And we tagged it onto that one. So you just want to be aware that we've already soldered onto this. But we're just going to go ahead and solder right over here. And then I kept the wires together. So I soldered both of them and kept them very, very close. And this is actually going to help us in the long run, just so we can solder onto here. And hopefully we're not going to pull this up and we won't have to re-solder anything. So I'm just gonna separate them a tiny bit and I'm gonna drop this one to the left right here first. So that's the one we haven't soldered onto. And now I'm gonna use the pressure and then go ahead and fuse the right one right there. So there we go, that's a really good clean solder. And then we're gonna go ahead and hook up the one fourth jack and then get it working on the amplifier. So the next step is we are going to go ahead and put this board back in. We're going to screw it back in and we are going to go ahead and drill out everything and mount all of our pieces.
Good morning, everyone. So I wanted to give you guys a garden update because we're approaching the end of season here and it's pretty sad, but I've got a lot of stuff done this year. So it's been a very, very productive year. So these bushes that you see in front of you, these are actually tomato plants. So our tomato plants have been super, super productive. They've grown just insanely wildly. Like I'm a six foot person and I can't reach the top of these and they were actually quite a bit larger. So not this one in particular, but this one over here, I would say this is probably about a 15 foot tomato plant because if you see, the sides have actually spilled over. They've actually spilled over onto this. So I've strung it up and done a lot of different things and actually folded over pieces of the tomato plant to go back downward. And then you see these are more of just like the lagging pieces that are shooting back up. So I stopped training them a while ago just because they were getting so tall, but this could have easily been a 20 foot tomato plant. It's actually kind of insane, but it's been very productive. It's, it gave us a lot of stuff this year. This is another one, another tomato plant that you see this thing came out of here, ran up. We had to get a ladder for it and it has grown up to there and I keep folding it over but it just keeps growing. We're getting to the end of the season so I'm not super worried about it. All the tomato plants are going to be dying out but they've produced a lot for us. So this is one of the peppers that I'm super excited about just because it's an actually delicious pepper and this is a scotch bonnet habanero cross. So I did this last year and the peppers on it they're all three pronged well, I would say most of them are three pronged. I haven't seen any that aren't, but there are less prongs on some of them. Now, these peppers, I'm not really going for this type of shape, although I like the three prong shape. That's not what I'm aiming for. This is the look that I'm aiming for right here. So I'm going to be recrossing it with a scotch bonnet. I actually have a strand of three pronged scotch bonnets. I'm going to be crossing with this exact plant because this is coming over. It is coming in with me over winter time. It's not something I'm actually leaving out. And I've actually done a couple more crosses to it just to get multiple crosses rolling throughout the winter time so I can have some more seeds to add to it. And we can recross and try to make a really good plant. But this is the F1 version of it. And the peppers are really delicious. We tried one, then it, w it didn't have any heat whatsoever. Um, probably like habanero in heat or I want to say habanero, jalapeno in heat. So less than a habanero, less than a scotch bonnet, but it was very, very delicious. Another one we ate while it was green and it absolutely lit us up. So we're going to be regrowing the one just because it was so delicious. And I'm going to see how these pods turn out right here. So this one, and then had another one over here. Should may have fallen off. Nope, right here. So I'm going to see how those two turn out, because that's really the shape I'm going for on this guy. And this right here, this is a daisy flat cutter. So daisy flat cutters are really, really cool. They'll actually eventually turn yellow, but they start out purple and they eventually turn yellow. So really, really pretty. I'm not sure exactly what shape I'm going with on that one. I'm just going to kind of see which pepper comes out. And this is another one that is going to be coming in with me over winter. So this is another tomato plant, it's a Sunrise, uh, Sunrise Sugar, and I grew it out of this tower deal. So I made this tower that was supposed to be a strawberry tower, I ended up planting Tabasco peppers which you could probably see back there. So there's some Tabasco peppers on it on the other side of this. Um, there's some strawberries that aren't doing too well and probably mainly because I don't water them enough. but. We had some Tabasco peppers on there, and you see the uh, red scorpion is actually growing through there as well. So we're going to have to separate that, but overall it did pretty good. I think it served its purpose, but. So this is a chocolate habanero. I actually have three peppers inside of this box, or actually four or five, five peppers. And then I was growing sage as well, which the sage did not do well whether it be lack of sunlight just because the peppers overgrew it or 
Maybe they killed him out in the root system. I'm not really sure. But this is a chocolate habanero right here. You can actually see one ripened right here. Then we have some scotch bonnets back here. Try to get a good shot of that. Scotch bonnets did really well. I believe there are two red scorpions inside of this box and two scotch bonnets. So this is a scotch bonnet. Obviously yellow peppers everywhere. You see the red scorpion back there. It's got a couple different peppers on it. So it's done really, really well this year, just inside that box. And these are ones that come in with me. I'll trim them down when the season gets to that time. I'm gonna trim them back a little bit and then bring them back indoors. This is a Trinidad scorpion, rather small one. This is another scorpion right here. You see it actually has sitting peppers on it. This is another scotch, or I'm sorry, that's a Trinidad scorpion yellow. So all these guys are Trinidad scorpions. And we have a really, really pretty one right over here. So right here, this is a Bootla chocolate cheese head. This is a type of ghost. And it's really, really pretty. It's like a chocolatey flavor, but really nice. That was actually the first one it produced. I have another plant over there that did produce a couple, but this is the first one this one produced. And overall, it's just a really good pepper. And that, that is one that I'm pretty sure I'm gonna be bringing in with me just because I'm not super happy with the shape that this one is in. It kind of, they all kind of have these like dented shape, like somebody just stuck their thumb in there, which is kind of interesting. And I was thinking about growing these to look like sad faces. So if you look pretty closely at the shape a lot of these are taking, it's almost like a sad face, even this one. So I was thinking about regrowing them just because of that and just growing, trying to stabilize that trait. I think it'd be kind of funny to do. So here's more tomatoes. You can see we actually have a couple different tomatoes through here. We have some pear tomatoes. Uh, some of them that are really, really taking that pear shape. And then we have some super sweet 100s there. Right here, this is another scorpion. You see it kind of shaping out. I have these two, which I do not remember what they are. And something I kind of did that was really funny this year, some of their scorpion right here, I just watered a uh, chocolate habanero and bohemian goat. Then there's another scorpion right there. But something I did really funny this year was I took some hot sauce and I pulled some seeds out and decided I was going to germinate them just to kind of see what the hot sauce companies are growing. And these are the result of that. And I actually have a bunch more, but these guys came directly out of a hot sauce bottle. I pulled the seeds out and I'm growing them. So then here's a couple more that all came from the hot sauce as well. I transplanted these yesterday, so they're not looking super hot, but you know, pepper fun, not intended. But um, what I'm gonna be doing with these is I'm just gonna let them grow out. And these chocolate maruga scorpions and red scorpions are the same thing. I'm just letting them grow out and I'm going to be cutting the ones that do not grow as fast in an attempt to make faster growing peppers. So I'm hoping, you know, typically peppers take about 90 days, 75 to 90 days to actually start producing. I'm hoping to cut that down quite a bit on a couple different varieties, mainly these two, but also the hot sauce plants, which I don't really know what they are as of yet, but it's a hot, hot sauce. So I'm guessing probably like scorpions, something like that. And we'll see what happens. We'll see if we can actually like knock down that time a little bit. And this is a result of the same experiment. I was doing these with some habanero plants as well. So you can see a whole bunch of habanero plants here. And with these habanero plants, simply what I do is I find ones that are kind of lagging down. I just rip them up and that's it. And then they won't interfere with the larger ones growth and the larger ones continue on. So this one you see right here actually has a lot of flowers on it. So it's probably going to get regrown this year. I'm probably going to start regrowing that maybe next year. 
I don't really want to grill habaneros indoors, um, but I probably will just go ahead and like pull the pods off of that one. So whichever one makes the pods first, I'm going to use its seeds. Like the first two pods that pop up, I'll use its seeds and then we'll regrow them and then just repeat that process for a couple years and you should get some pretty fast growing peppers, I would think. So these are pretty cool over here. What these are, these are actually ground cherries. So ground cherries are something that I'm very new to, but I got them from another grower. Sorry, I actually stopped the uh, video somehow, but um, these are ground cherries and ground cherries, how they work is you take this and then it has this husk on it. So you peel it on the outside. Try to do this off of camera. So you peel the outside of it and then you have the cherry on the inside and the cherry almost tastes like a pineapple vanilla flavor so you just throw the husk away and they'll keep good forever inside those husks and then from there you can literally just eat them so they are a really really good snack they taste absolutely amazing so this is another tomato plant right here you see it was actually growing up towards the roof this is a brad's atomic tomato that most definitely needs water. Then we have this guy right here. Now I'm not sure what exactly this is. I'm thinking it's either a chocolate cheese head bootla or a big black mama. I'm not really sure because you see it does have that shape to it. But at the same time, some of the other pods kind of look like scorpions. So I'll probably be posting that to the group, uh, the pepper group, to see if anybody can really identify that thing. I had a label in here. But the label itself just kind of smeared and I didn't catch on until it was far too late. And now I don't really know what this guy is. But I absolutely love this plant. We can see the thickness of the trunk here. It is a beautiful, beautiful plant. I mean, it grows very prolifically. I've ran a lot of flowers on this and had a couple peppers. But just the shape and everything on this plant is just great. So I'm definitely regrowing this one. And it is coming in with me over the year, or over the winter. So this is a seven pot white ghost. Seven pot white ghost I'm actually new to this year, but it's a good cross. And I crossed it a couple more times. These are crossed with a Jay's Pete Scorpion. So essentially the outcome of this will be a, um, it would be a J seven pot white ghost Pete Scorpion. It's just a hodgepodge of different type of pepper genetics. And I'm hoping to make something pretty cool out of that. I'm not really a big fan of the shape of these specific white pod, or I'm sorry, seven pot white ghost. I have another strand that looks quite a bit different and I kind of like them better. But on these guys, I think I'm gonna be going more for the uh, ghost pepper look. Just kind of that almost, well, the J seven pot peach scorpion. So you see, how they're actually shaped over here. Now there's one here that's growing that I really, really like to shape up. So this guy right here. So if I can get seven pot genetics in that and then get it to be white and hotter, I would really, really enjoy that. So I think that's what I'm really aiming for on these guys is that once I get them out of that genetic stage then I'm gonna be start, I'm gonna start shaping them down these guys are quite interesting. I don't know what they are. They look to me to be some type of ghost, but I just literally threw them in here. Maybe this one's Scotch Bonnet, Habanero, something like that. Don't really know. Looks like a Habanero, but I didn't play any Habaneros over here. So these guys I just threw inside of this box and pretty much said best of luck to you. And here they are. So they're growing and some of them are actually producing as well. This here, it always looks like it needs water. It's a Mad Hatter plant, which it does need water. I over drilled the bottom of this and the thing always needs water. But this is a Mad Hatter plant. This guy is about two years old. Um, he's been around for a while, but I actually do think I'm letting him go this year just because it's not something that I enjoy. They're kind of tasteless peppers. They're not super great. I bought them a couple years ago. Um, just not super big fan. They do turn red, which I guess a lot of people have issues with their turning red. It'll keep a pod for probably about 
two or three weeks before it actually turns but these guys do turn red I'm just uh, kind of done with them so this guy right here is actually a really interesting one I don't know what this is so I've been crossing it with all kinds of different stuff and I really really am confused on what this guy is I'm thinking maybe devil's breath or something like that um, dragon's breath something something along those lines but it's shooting off a couple different pods that are really all just looking like little cherry pods. So it's a really interesting thing and I just put a number on it just so when I'm crossing it with other stuff, I know what it is or at least what I'm crossing it with. But all in all, I'm not really sure. I grew a lot of seeds this year and then Dragon's Breath was one of them, but I had thought all of them died, but I might've transplanted them into that. But the growth pattern on this thing is just so strange to me. It literally just grew downward. Which also may be because we had that right there that kept moving over. But at some point it was sitting right here on the side. As opposed to bending down. And it just kind of took its own independence going downward. So a really interesting plant for sure. Now these guys are the same deal. I don't really know what they are. Um, down here though I have a tomato plant that just came out of nowhere. I think one dropped off and then kind of got going by itself. We have a bunch of habaneros and we actually have a couple scotch bonnets back here as well. So habanero scotch bonnets. They've produced quite a bit. I've actually cut them back. But you can see all of these pods just everywhere inside of here. But I did cut them back just uh, a couple weeks ago. Just because they were kind of coming over onto the onions and all of that stuff and it's it's getting towards the end of the season i'm having so many habaneros come up that i'm actually giving them away online and it's costing me an absolute fortune but i don't want them to go to waste so i've been giving them away and here we are and i do have a couple different types of plants that i just planted and they are coming in with me over the winter so not to fear this is meant these are a bunch of just different plants, which again are coming in with me um, over the winter time. It looks like the label actually came off of this guy, which is super great. I had to turn it out, Scorpion. So you can see, I'm using a lot of these guys just for the pollen so I can cross them. I've got a massive amount of crosses sitting. Chocolate habanero. It did really well this year, although. I don't like the way this thing grows. It always looks like this, even at first I thought I was over fertilizing it or something, but it just, it focuses a lot on pods. Not really sure. Now these guys are really funny right here. So these are trifoliate orange trees. They're trifoliate sour oranges. And this was probably about the growth about right here without all of these offshoots. They sat out here all winter time. I thought for sure they were dead. So I let it just left them. And this year they came back. So they came back this year, popped up everywhere. They're growing really, really well. I'm planning on leaving them out here again because I do have one that I took and put in its own little thing here. And it didn't seem to like it too much. It dropped its leaves after transplant and I kept it out of the sun for a couple of days. Kind of did its own thing, but So that one will be coming in with me. The other one's probably just going to keep out here. So this is a lime tree right here. You can see a lot of the key limes actually coming in. Then this is a um, Carolina Reaper. So beautiful, beautiful peppers on this guy. I got him from Walmart. He's tinted wrong. I think it's an iron deficiency. Not really sure. I've been giving him iron and phosphate but still he hasn't really lost it you can see that the new green leaves and stuff they're coming in a little bit better I just started that probably about four or five days ago so I'm actually really glad to see that that there's a lot of different flowers on it that are coming in and there's new growth on it I'm sorry this is not a key lime over here this is a um this is a calamondin orange this is the key lime. So the key lime is actually shooting 
different branches, like new growth everywhere. Which is weird to see this late in the season because I haven't fertilized them in a while. But really glad to see it. And as you see, there are a couple of different fruits on here that are just getting started. And there are some in here that have been started for a while, but just not seeing them as of now. Stink bugs. Now this right here, this is an agami kumquat. Nagami kumquats are super cool because you actually just eat the entire outside of them and everything. So they did really well this year. I actually had to start shaping it because it was just going crazy. It had all kinds of offshoots just everywhere all over this. And that's not really something that I can put up with with the lights on an indoor setup. So I did have to start shaping it. Eventually I want this branch to come all the way up here and then just have like a canopy right here then just whatever happens down here during winter time just happens down there so this here is a Meyer lemon and as you see this guy has a lot of lemons on him and you may remember him when i did a garden update uh i think it was like a year and a half ago this guy looked dead he had no leaves on him whatsoever i think he had one or two different leaves I mean, he's not looking super great, but he's done really, really well this year. So he had a lot of new growth on him. And we've got a couple different little lemons here that I'm super excited about because Meyer lemons are delicious. And I don't really know what's going on with him, but he has a lot of growth. He shoots out a bunch of growth, leaves fall off. I may need to reach out to somebody for that, kind of see if there's anything I can do to help out. But... I am really, really glad he came through. This is a variegated pink lemon right here. And the variegated pink lemon has done really well this year too. Um, we dealt with some pest. As you can see, there's a bunch of white crap everywhere and that's because I sprayed it. It was dealing with some pest. And that one is the same deal. Variegated pink lemon also had a pest issue. Sprayed it down. It's looking pretty good now. This is a variegated Talamondan tree. So Talamondan orange to variegated. And you see it actually has a couple different limbs that are fully variegated. So they have no color whatsoever. So there's no green pigmentation. It's just all white. So I'm interested to see what happens there. Looks like we dropped a pepper off. But yeah, so. I'm not growing any tomatoes over winter this year like I did last year. These guys are super, super cool. So these are pink ghost peppers. You see a little bit of a larger one right there. So I'm excited about the pink ghost peppers. The crazy thing about these, before the flower even opens up, they're already producing pollen and they're already kicking the pollen out. So once you get to that point, if you haven't crossed them, you already missed your opportunity. It sucks when you're trying to cross them, but it's actually a pretty cool feature to have in a flower. So I've been having to actually open the flowers up to cross them. And we've got a bunch of different peppers throughout here. These guys are labeled really, really well. And as you see, I have been using them for crossing. This is a bubblegum red which I'm excited about that pod that looks so freaking cool so most of them don't look like that but this one is for sure getting regrown and this is one of the guys that are coming in over the year um, I may I may rehouse them I don't know so there's an orange king bell pepper here I'm not even showing you orange king bell pepper here and well it looks like a pest got in there that's not good well it's an orange king bell pepper and it took up a lot of this space here it's not something i'm super a fan of i may just rehouse this guy in its own little containment thing and let him go but this is the habanero plant that is like two and a half years old again he did really well this year 
I'm not sure if I am bringing him in this year. I may just do away with all the habaneros aside from the ones that I'm training to grow very fast. I may just let them all go aside from that. Uh, we'll see. It's a 7 pot 007 pepper right here. I'm going to show you those guys in a second. And then this is a... I think it's a Bootchalokia brain strain yellow. Don't remember. Maybe you could see it a little bit better, but... This pepper impressed me this year. So, right there, you see it coming out of that orange pot. It's a monster pepper. So it did super, super well this year, and this is one that is coming in. Um, who knows? Maybe over Christmas we'll decorate it as a Christmas tree. I mean, it's a very, very large pepper for sure. So I've crossed that with a bunch of different things. I've used pollen from it and crossed it with a bunch of different things. I'm most definitely gonna be crossing stuff onto it because that is such a cool pepper. It is so large and I started it like mid season. So like the growth on that thing has just blown me away. Other than that, that is about it. That is, that is a season in a nutshell. We've grown a lot of different mint. As you can see, there's mint here. There's a mint basket up there. There is another mint basket right there. And another one right here. These guys have shot off a lot. The mint has done really, really well this year. Which kind of like some of the peppers, I'm just going to trim it back and redo it. I've gave a lot of people different strands this year on the mint, so... A lot of this stuff's floating around, and I've also got a lot of seeds from them after crossing the mint and stuff. And mint crosses so freely that there's no real way of knowing. And a lot of the mint that is on market is F1. So when you regrow mint from seeds, it's never really going to be true to its parent. So if you take sweet mint and regrow it, there's no guarantee it's going to smell like sweet mint or anything like that. And that's kind of where you get all these different things like fruit mint, lemon mint, lime mint. All that stuff. The mint has been super successful this year, for sure. Then we grew some green onions over here as well. But you can see some mint flowers right here. And I've just really been crossing those with other flowers and then pulling them off. And letting them dry to get the seeds out and everything. Obviously waiting a little while in between. But this stuff is amazing. This is fruit sorbet mint. It smells so good. But yeah, so there's some green onions over here, and we also grew potatoes this year, which were harvested quite some time ago. But that is a quick overview of everything, and current crosses, the only F1 that I have is this guy right here, but planning on stabilizing that and growing some more crosses, for sure. So I hope you enjoyed this, and I'd like to wish everybody a super happy Sunday. And I will talk to you guys later.